Our consent is a choice. We have, uh, a lot of people call it free will. We decide things all the time, how we live and navigate our life. I think it's one of the most powerful things the universe has given us. It is, it's powerful, and I'm going to show you why. And there's a lot of things we consent to that we don't understand. We've been brainwashed a lot. We've been brainwashed a whole lot. And I've mentioned this guy in the past, just in passing, but Edward Bernays was the nephew of Sigmund Freud. He has played a powerful influence in every one of y'all's lives, including my own. He said this, the conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in the democratic society. The manipulation of our opinions, our opinions, is very important. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, which is the true ruling power. And this guy should know. <laughs> he was at the upper echelons of mental manipulation throughout the United States for a long time. He actually helped engineer it. We are governed, our minds are molded, our tastes formed, our ideas suggested, largely by men none of y'all have probably ever heard of. It's a pretty unique thing once you start learning about these things. A couple of things, just right out of the gate, what he did, some of the things that were, uh, he's famous for among thousands of others, he tricked women to smoke. He thought it was a cigar I mean, uh, tobacco companies came to him and said, uh, we really need the other half of the population to smoke. How, how are we going to manipulate women to think that? So he did. He also, as most people know now, a big breakfast is, is not a healthy thing. A lot of people do intermediate fasting. We've been told that these things are really, really good for us. And in fact, they're not. We did not eat eggs or bacon for breakfast. That was never a thing in the United States. It was not a thing. So if we all like eggs and, bre eggs and bacon for breakfast, which I do, that would have never have been a thing without this guy. Just a fact. He tricked people into financing war. He tricked young boys and girls to enlist in war, among many, 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 many other things. And this is how he tricked women. Like, this is so fascinating to me because can you imagine a woman looking at some fancy magazine, what any magazine, because magazines were extraordinarily popular during World War I and through you know, the 60s. To keep a slender figure, no one could deny your lucky strike. You know, the girls, oh, I need to be slim. Oh, God, look, I look, I will look so classy if I just have a cigarette. And those subtle manipulations that nobody picks up on they're planted. They're farming your brain. It is really, really interesting. Smoking is believing. You know, you have your independence if you can smoke. You're a strong, independent woman. Just pick up a cigarette. Yeah, wow. And most people think that it is their idea, when in fact, you've been bamboozled. You are not an American. You 100% American, you better prove it. You better buy some war bonds. You better support the war effort. Better hurry up. You're not a patriot. That was a big deal. Like, that was a big deal. You better buy your war bonds, or otherwise, you're an outcast. I mean, what a better way to get men to go fight for something. Gee, I wish I were a man. I'd join the Navy today. Be a man and do it. Join the Navy. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's a big deal. Those are little seeds that most people never pick up on. How about step into your place? Hurry up, masses. Get in your line. Let's go. Yeah, enlist. What side are you going to be on? We get a lot of little bitty things happening to us that we just are not quite aware of. And there's a lot of manipulation going on. This is, you can go to the CIA.gov and they've released so much, but you have these really important people that use the Freedom of Information Act to get requests, and they have to sue the CIA and all these intelligence agencies, and eventually they get parts, and sometimes most of it. And if you don't know, 
all, or not all, the vast majority of everybody that we have trusted as a newscaster to give us our opinions, because that is really what happens in most cases, because nobody delves into what they see or hear, they were all on the payroll of the CIA to manipulate us. And those manipulative words were told exactly what to say. They're reading off of a prompter by Edward Bernays and guys like him. It's easy to manipulate us. It's not difficult. It's quite sad, but I encourage everybody on your own, just go out and look up Project Mockingbird. There is so much, it, well, let me back up. You don't need to go look at anybody else talking about it. Just go look at the documents from the government itself. Go to the source. It's pretty interesting. This is really scary. I just think of how scary this is and it's frightening. If you've never heard of Operation Northwoods, this is also you can find at any, just type it in. You want the original source documents for the government on Operation Northwoods. This is where the United States Joint Chiefs of Staff planned to blow up ships in Guantanamo Bay, to kill U.S. citizens in Miami and other places around the country, and make it look like it was Cubans. So we would go in and invade Cuba. Now, when you start thinking about that, you think, wow, this is one of the most wonderful countries and experiments in the world. Why in the world would this be happening? Why are we giving our consent to these things? Like, why? Why are we doing it? If I'd have known that as a young boy when I joined the United States Army, I think I'd have been real, real skeptical and afraid after I'd signed that line. But it also makes you wonder, if you look at that, you go, wow, I wonder what else I wasn't told. Because Kennedy put a stop to that. Kennedy said, this was crazy. This is crazy. But then you look at the Lusitania in World War I, where we knew all of a sudden those documents are available to everybody now. Blown up. So we're getting to World War I. The United States did not want to get into it. Then you look at all of the information, which is vast on FDR, knowing that we blew up uh, Pearl Harbor because nobody wanted another world war. You needed the consent of the masses to destroy their soul by killing other people. You needed the consent of everybody. So what do you do? You go blow up a bunch of boys in uh, Pearl Harbor and bam, this is Operation Northwoods. Just look it up. It's amazing. And it makes you question a lot of other things, like the last interview of Robert McNamara, who was Secretary of Defense, said, yeah, the Gulf of Tonkin is what elevated us into the Vietnam War and really got us in there to kill millions of Vietnam civilians and combatants and also kill 58,000 U.S. soldiers. And he said it was a complete lie and a fraud. That's what he said. He's Secretary of Defense. So if they already have done this, because they nonchalantly just mentioned this to Kennedy, like, oh yeah, let's just go kill some U.S. citizens, then when everybody will be fired up, we can go invade Cuba. That's scary for the soul of our country and the whole world. It's freaky. Makes you go all the way, well, what happened in 9-11? And so many other things. In many cases, our thoughts are not our own. Like, we get real fired up. You can remember uh, when we went into Iraq. Of course, that was a lie. You had people driving around in their pickup trucks holding their American flags, and I know there's nothing wrong with the American flag. There's nothing greater than the idea of America freedom. Even with all of our flaws, we are the best experiment that has ever been known to humankind. That's a fact. But if we're not aware and giving our consent, then we're doomed. And we've been doomed for about 60 years, which is if anybody knows anything about history, these things go in cycles and we're just running as fast as we can off the cliff. And because mostly nobody knows, which is kind of sad. What else do we consent to? Go look up this one, Operation Paperclip. Who thought we were a nation run by Nazis? Who? 1,500 Nazi killers, war criminals, we brought over here in Operation Paperclip. Alan Dulles did it in the CIA, which was the OSS, the precursor, precursor to the CIA. I don't think any of us, and I don't know any, and I don't want to know any, 
war criminal Nazis. I, I don't think it's a bad idea. I think fascism is really bad, and I think killing other people is really, really bad. And But we did. We brought them over here. Kindergarten is a good example. Does kindergarten sound like an English word? <laughs> no, it's a German word. Why? Because we want your babies as early as possible. We want them as early as possible because we want to separate you from the family unit as fast as we can. That was all implemented right after World War II. It's pretty amazing stuff. We brought German scientists, the te technicians and the engineers, and many of them. And how about this? How many know, just go to NASA, go to NASA's website, and look up the founding members of NASA is Warner Von Braun. He's one of the biggest war criminals in human history. What does he do? He runs NASA. NASA, our beloved NASA that we trust so much. The same ones that say we can't get back to the moon because we lost the technology. What? <laughs> what do you mean? You just lost the notebook? <laughs> I threw it away? Uh, I don't know. It seems a little weird, doesn't it? What does that do to us in our human spirit when we have those kind of lies and, and manipulation swirling us nonstop? How do we have free will and consent when we don't know what's in front of our face? It's a big question we should ask ourselves all the time. You know, what, is, what do these things do to our human spirit? We bring over all this evil. We say commit evil here. We pay our taxes. We do these things. We're accomplices in crime, whether we agree to or not agree to, whether we consent or not. We are allowing ourselves to be accomplices in major crime. And I think we're all better than that. I don't believe, as we talked about last week, that we shouldn't do our own research because we're not smart enough. I don't believe that for a second. I believe every one of us has a very, very unique and beautiful spirit that has the ability to reason and think for ourselves individually. You can go find information and you can make yourself aware. And you can start filtering out things for yourself. That's why it's so important to have groups like this where we get together and elevate our spirit. We can meditate together. We can bring each other different information and bounce ideas off each other and not get offended because we're coming from a place of good intent and so we can open each other's eyes in better ways for us to see things differently. It's important. It's important. I think we should do like this girl. Let's just wait a second before I consent to that. Before I can sit, I see everybody yelling and screaming, go Patriot thingy, uh, the next trendy thing. Uh, let me wait and think about that for a second. I need to know what I think before the media and the other propaganda that's just all in front of my face everywhere I look. I need to step back and look for a second for myself. I need to know the facts before I place a judgment, before I have an assessment of what's going on. You know, if anxiety, fear, whatever emotion strikes you, it's up to us to realize how it affects us. It is our responsibility. Same way with our emotions. We have to consent to our emotions. We see some kind of propaganda that gets us fired up. We have to consent to how that affects us. We have to agree with it. Or we don't. And then we don't understand it and it gets us all fired up. We are the only ones that can control our own emotions. And we got to know, what are we agreeing to and what are we forced into? Most of the time, most people don't know. Just don't know. So we have to get rid of some of the obvious mental trash in our head. Like we got a lot of it. There's a lot of mental trash going on. We consent to everything. Our friendships, we agree to accept them or reject them. We consent to our own behavior. We consent to our flawed judgments. We automatically make judgments about everything and we don't know all the facts. We consent to our physical actions. We consent to whether we're stretching or not stretching or we're getting fat or not fat. Like we're all, that's all a consent. We are agreeing. We are consenting to things that we have not vetted for ourselves. You consent to your good and bad moods. When you're pissed off, well, you are agreeing with yourself to stay pissed off or to catch it and change your mood. You are consenting to be an asshole or a great, pleasant person. Like that is your decision alone. You can be obnoxious or you can be a wonderful person to be around. 
How about financial slavery? We consent to this. This really drives me crazy. Crazy. I'm already crazy, I'm sure. So most people worry about money, and I believe it's a very dark force. Not money itself. I, I think the way it is all constructed, and that's a whole other talk another time, but it steals away our energy in a large part. It takes us away from our own meditation. It has, so much time goes into hurrying up and trying to make that an extra buck and it steals us away from our meditating to connect with Mother Nature, to connecting with ourselves, connecting with our friends, connecting with so many things because we just have to chase it. And most people don't understand it. I know a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, prices will probably go down. It'd probably be a lot better if these CEOs weren't making so much money. I agree in most cases. Like, we overpay them. Uh, but guess what? Most of them are private companies or if they're public companies, if you find out they're doing stupid stuff, they're paying their people too little and they're paying themselves too much, stop buying their products. Vote with your emotions on that subject. Like you agree. Hey, that is punishment. You are doing a bad thing. You're, a, you're stealing from other people that could be making a higher wage or, or, or lower prices. If you don't like it, don't. Give them your money. You can vote with your dollars. It's pretty important. They recognize it. Just as a little side note, uh, you consent to how financially independent you are. Like that, that is a, that you consent to it. Everybody, you are in your exact financial decision most often because of your own choices in life. Nobody else's choice. You are at your situation because you did it. Nobody else. And you can get out of it. it. Just takes time. You have to have patience and you have to control your emotions. You know, we're we're just forced to believe so many things. Something that I was reading uh, the other day said, you know, if we just tax the rich, get a little bit more from the poor and go ahead and take a little bit more from the shrinking middle class, we could solve all of these big problems. You know, I mean, we're if y'all look at the debt chart, you know, it's been going like this for a long time, but we're on a parabolic shot straight up. It's been that way for the past four presidents, Republicans and Democrats. No, they're both the same. But you know what, if you took, this is an interesting thing, thing, well, why don't we just tax the rich some more? It's far too late for that. We're way past that point. Like it's way past that point. You could take all of their money, 100% of all people with over 1%, that have 1% that control everything, all of their money. You don't pay for a half a year of U.S. spending. Like you don't pay for a half a year of U.S. spending. That's amazing. So we're way past the point of that. That's, that's talk, we're, we're, we're just like saying, oh, let's not get into World War I. Well, you know, that was over a hundred years ago. <laughs> you can't talk us out of it now. It's already happened. And then, I heard a proposal the other day. Well, we'll just tax everybody that makes over a million. We'll just take all of it, 100% of everything you make over a million. Well, this has been tried in many countries around the world. And if you know just a sliver of any history, uh, every country that's done it has just, they're gone. It's over. It's toast. Everyone. There's no exception. So the solutions that we like to think about and banner around now, yeah, well, they, we're, we're far too late. You're late to the party. So what are we gonna do? I don't know, it's a tough question. It's really tough. And I don't have any direct answers. I've got a bunch of ideas, but you know, until it crashes, it's just gonna keep going. But how about this? We can sit to doing this, every one of us, all the time. I mean, I get so mad at myself. I get pissed off when I buy bottled water, but I'm thirsty. I know the water's crap, even though it's in a bottle, but I still know, oh my God, this is horrible. But at least Jill got us some of these containers that are, you know, we can care, fill up our water at the house. Clean <laughs> like, okay, that's, that's our first step. All right, we're doing a little bit better. And it's just bad. You know, we control what goes into our body. Nobody else. You want to stop poisoning humanity with crap and stop drinking bleach? Let's just lead by example. It takes a while to stop our habits. You know, we're just so used to going to the grocery store, buying whatever we feel like, going to dinner and eating whatever crap looks good. But we don't pay attention to all the nasty stuff that's in it. And so we're not changing our habits. We're just not doing it. 
But then we wonder why everybody's dying of cancer and why everybody has it and why everybody has all these health problems. Why my knees and why are my joints hurting? Why? Well, because you're abusing yourself. You just are. It's horrible. We need to stop it. It's our responsibility, our individual responsibility to take care of our mind, body, and spirit as wisely as possible. And that's why we need each other to help each other. Like me and Chuck go to Nicky's, which is one of my favorite Mexican restaurants, and he sees me just shoveling in chips. He should say, hey, uh, let's not be a fat ass, Kev. You know, because that's what guys kind of do, right? You know, not everybody is going to step toe. Oh, I don't want to offend somebody. I would hope my buddy Chuck, well, I know for a fact, he, <laughs> hey, put that chip down. You don't want to be a fatty, do you? Um, except for extreme circumstances of, you know, abuse and addictions and stuff like that, we can sit to our happiness, our sadness, and our relationships, especially in marriages and in every relationship. Like, we agree to it. If I tell myself before Jill comes home when I'm upstairs working that I don't want to go down because I still have stuff to do and I'm kind of irritated, well, when I go down, that energy is going to be reflected in the kitchen. It just is. If I say I don't really want to go to lunch at the place she wants to go to, so I got a little attitude, then all of a sudden that's reflected in our relationship. And then what does that do? Then that would create a spiral of nonsense. Luckily, I do not do that at all. I can promise your sweet ass I do not. But I have, I have done it. And I know from personal experience that we play a large role in our relationships. Me and Ricky know it well. I mean, if, I mean, we're like boyfriend and boyfriend. I mean, he's like, if Ricky is my pal, you know? I mean, he's my buddy. And every time either one of us are in a foul mood, it changes the, the whole thing. It's, it's strange how that works. We can sit to censorship. You know, this was a big deal, especially uh, right before the scandemic. Huge deal. It was problematic. And luckily, the big platform, YouTube, has, st has started to relent on some of that. They still do a lot of shadow banning and they still cut people off, but... They have a lot of competition now from free speech, First Amendment places like Rumble, BitChute, Odyssey, Daily Motion. There's a, there are a lot of them that are directly competing and they're allowing people to, all these doctors, scientists, all these people to have a free platform. And it's important to know these things. It's important to know that certain things we're not able to see. This happened just the other day. There was a closed committee hearing in Congress, but we have the transcripts. And this is an eye-opening thing about how we're manipulated, how we are consenting to things only because we've been told and we don't have the information. Most of y'all will probably know who Francis Collins is. He was the head of the NIH, the National Institute of Health. He controlled CDCs over all of these organizations that totally dictate what we were told to put into our body without our consent, mostly, or you lose your job or whatever. But this is interesting. We can only read what he said, we're not allowed to see it. And most people will never know to go to the congressional files to even look to see what was said. This was just the other day. And under oath, so he's under threat of perjury. It's a big deal. And he knows it. And he knows there are people that are trying to go after him for it too. Is the lab leak the accident of it, a human getting it? Was it lab leaked to the public? Is that... Um, is that scenario a conspiracy theory, he was asked? Not at this point. So when we were told all those wackos that were conspiracy theories for saying it was probably a lab leak, the head guy, the head guy that was everywhere above Fauci is telling us whenever he specifically came out saying that's a conspiracy theory, it's not true, under oath in Congress, his transcript is... Uh, not at this point, it's not a conspiracy theory. But why isn't, the, why isn't everybody just yelling and screaming about that wanting to know when we were gaslighted into believing something else? We're manipulated to think things that aren't true. How about this? The question from him was, um, I think I know the answer to this question. This is the congressman. But I want to ask it. Is the origin of the scamdemic still unsettled science? Is it still unsettled science? Uh, yes. That's all he said. Yes, it's totally unsettled. I don't remember any of us hearing that. And this was the most interesting thing to me out of reading the transcripts. 
We asked Dr. Fauci where the six foot rule came from. He said it just kind of, his own words, it just appeared is his quote. So they asked Dr. Francis um, Collins, Dr. Francis Collins, do you recall science or evidence? that supported the six foot distance. Do you, head of all of our health in this country and controls all of these things, do you have science and evidence supporting the six foot distancing rule? I do not, was his answer. I do not. So everybody that couldn't go see their grandma die, they couldn't go to a funeral, they couldn't go get married, they had to stand and wait, and don't touch anybody because we know the human spirit needs to be touched and hugged and loved. We don't want you to do that. We don't want people to come together. We want you to be in fear. It's a great illustration of how we're manipulated. So when people say it's the science, the head of science, the head of the United States science, we do not have any evidence or science to back up why we did that. That's a powerful thing to know. And it's really upsetting because so many people are attached to their idea. It's just real sad because we get identified with our belief systems when our belief system was predicated on being lied to and manipulated. So we identify with that belief. And then when we find out our belief was wrong and we've been manipulated, we don't want to give up that belief because we're so emotionally attached to it to begin with. It's a problem. But we give consent. Willfully or unwillfully. Because now that y'all all have heard these, you've heard of Operation Mockingbird, Paperclip, you've heard of the, the six-foot distancing, we want to control these people. Well, now you would be willfully consenting if you don't go and look it up and know it for yourself. All I can do is barely touch on it and introduce you to some of these things that you may not have been introduced to before. So you can either stay in willful ignorance or know yourself. Know why you think certain things. Know why you believe the way you believe. S connect to the infinite. I don't believe that the universal energies want us to be manipulated by dark forces. I don't believe that's true. I just don't believe it. I don't believe that Mother Earth allowed us to spring up just so we can get manipulated by these snakes in the grass. I just I don't believe it. You know, this is our water bottle. These are the water bottles that each one of us have bought when we're thirsty. They're just filling up the ocean. You know, I'm a good steward of the land. We all are. Many of y'all come out and help do stuff out here and preserve the soil. We plant, we prune. Uh, we're having cows uh, that we say thanks for and that we all share. But that's all of us too. We're all doing that. We're all creating these mountains of ocean pollution just by stopping and grabbing a Coke. That's what we're doing. So we can say we're a Republican, Democrat, we all want to save the world, but we all do that every single day. So if we want to change something, we got to change ourselves. we got to lead by example. I'm really glad Jill led by example and got me a water container to fill up before I go. But am I still going to go buy a bottled water? Yeah, probably. Am I going to be pissed off at myself? Yeah, probably, probably. But we got to start recognizing it. You have to recognize it before you know you got to really start affecting change. We do everything by our own choice. And when we know what we are doing and continue to do it, and it's causing harm to ourselves and others, we got a problem. We got to recognize it and stop it. It's important. Just two more. Y'all stay with me. This is interesting because we know we have an environmental problem from big corporations, our own individual consent and in supporting them. But there's also a lot of lies mixed in with that. And it's easy to control the massive with lies. You sprinkle a bunch of truth and a lie, and it's real easy for everybody to start believing it. It doesn't matter what side you are on, on climate change, it's real or not real, maybe somewhere in the middle. What is a fact is CO2 does not cause different elevations of heat or coldness. It is really simple for any one of y'all to go look at the core samples of ice and see, there were periods where CO2 was outrageously high. Outrageously high. The earth temperature, outrageously low. Same and opposite. CO2 levels were way low. 
or, or just vice versa. Like you can just go look at it and you can go, well, well, temperature couldn't be changing because of that, what we've been sold on. And you can look at different parts of history through these ice cores, which are fascinating, that the higher the CO2 levels, the more abundant Earth life was. Like life was crazy abundant. The higher it is, the better it is. We are dangerously low. All the scientists, whether they're for or against it or somewhere in the middle, they'll all say about 180 parts per million, we're all dead. We're all dead. And they want to get us to about 220 is the goal. Well, that's dangerously close to all of us being dead. When anybody, you don't have to be a scientist to go look at the, the core analysis. It's pretty simple to see that, oh, there are periods where life is abundant and where everything's healthy around the world, but CO2 levels are in the thousands. So what are we to believe? It confuses us. We get manipulated. We know we're doing damage. But what's the cause? What are we going to get punished for? Oh, do we need, now we got to pay taxes and some uh, move your behavior over here because we can make more money off of you this way. A lot of weird, weird things going on that we should just question. We should ask questions and not be offended of what the answer is. The truth should not offend us. We should find out for ourselves. So this really all just boils down to we consent to being self-aware. We consent to have better attitudes or not. We consent to thinking more clearly about what we're told to really ask questions. We consent to do it or not. What we think about, what we dwell on, all these, we, can, we agree, we're using our free will. Do we want to be better stewards of Mother Nature or don't we? Do we want to stay in tune, connect with the universe? And I do have that meter that you put on your finger that we, some of y'all we saw in the documentary Earthing where it shows how the energy goes through your body and then you put on the, your flip-flops or tennis shoes and it stops. Just, we want to take care of Mother Nature. We want to illustrate and show that we can be in tune. We govern ourselves. We have to agree to govern ourselves better. I think we can. I think we should. Because obviously we're being manipulated. And I don't like being manipulated and I don't want any of y'all to be manipulated and I would like for everybody to exercise critical thinking, which we were not taught to do in public schools. You better hurry up and follow. And if you don't know the history of how public schools were started in this country, you, by damn, you probably should know that. Design like a jail, treat you like a jail, created to produce workers, people that don't think. If you don't believe that, just go read all of their founding documents. It's amazing. If y'all like this and you're in the local area, come out and see us. We're really a bunch of fun people and we really need help growing in just love, abundance of thought, helping each other out. Like if we don't help each other out, who are we gonna count on? These yahoos trying to manipulate us? You know I mean? We need each other. We need each other. And that's it. I love y'all. We'll see you next time.